Coming to you live from the lush portico on the plain of Ravnica, it's Tap Tap Concede, Scryfall Roulette Edition. Ah. Ah. Hi, I'm Wheeler. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here, but I'm not alone. We got a Kathleen. Hello. We got a Nelson. No R's will be rolled by Nelson. We got a James on tech. Roll. And we got you to thank for your support over at patreon.com slash loading ready run. We couldn't do all this without you. Uh, so thank you so much for your support over there and cardkingdom.com sponsor of tap tap concede. If you make an order and use the link that is available and say button, please while supplies last, you can get a small button that says a goofy phrase, potentially serving Jund. We don't know. You might know. Let us know in the comments below if you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Tell us what the button is. Yeah. We and, appreciate it. And you know what? If you've got any good ideas for buttons, let us know. We'll yeah. steal them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll give you, we'll, we'll tell you that we're doing it. And we'll, we'll tell you that we're giving you credit. Yes. But we will not give you credit. I'm Speak not going to tell you we're giving you credit. You know what? Maybe don't give us your ideas. We can come up with our own ideas. <laughs> One of these hosts lies and the other always tells the truth. Please comment something, you whether it's a lie or not. You have to figure out which one it is. Oh, yeah. Which one is lying? Which one is always telling the truth? And which one doesn't care? Drop us below. That's going to make it really that's hard. That's really hard. <laughs> yeah. That's like the, the LRR TTC equivalent of like uh, Mary sleep with kill. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like you have to figure out which one doesn't care, which one lies, and which one tells the truth. Yeah. Uh, joke's on you. I'm all three. Mm -hmm. All the time. Speaking of all the time, we got all the time in the world to talk about stuff that isn't related to new releases of Magic the Gathering or upcoming releases of Magic the Gathering. So let's do a Scryfall Roulette. If this is your first time tuning into one of these, uh, it's real simple. James hits a button. A card pops up on the screen. I'm going to read the card. And then we're going to talk about the card. If we like the card, cool. If we don't like the card, we don't have to talk about it too much. You got stories? Share them. If you want to veto a card, you may. But you can Every also veto someone else's veto. That's correct, Nelson. Everybody gets one veto, and you can veto vetoes. Wheeler's always had at least one. That's how it's worked before. Yes. All right. So you can use your one veto to make to nullify somebody else's veto. I mean, ideally, we're not doing it for like a, you know... A cruelty? Motivation. Yeah, if I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk about this card because this card was played when I got a phone call about, like, my house getting destroyed in an earthquake. And then you're like, no, no, hold on. Hold on, I want to no. see you suffer. Let's dig into that <laughs> yeah, trauma here. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Let's burrow in like ticks. Can I have a phone a friend or like a 50-50? Mm. No. There, there's a there's a there's a minute chance that one of these cards may have something that I contributed to it creative text wise. So Ooh. fingers crossed. Jokes on you. I don't have a phone or a friend. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. James. Negate. <gasps> one one in a blue for an instant from Morning Tide. Counter target non creature spell. I mean, this is one of those cards that. It feels wild that it took until 2008 for them to print. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that was kind of the sentiment at the time. Like, I do remember this actually, this set was the, uh, what was the last one for a long time before I started working at Yellow Jacket. Like, I started working at Yellow Jacket in, which, wait, no. Was this, this is at the Bitter Blossom was in, or was Bitter Blossom in Lorwyn? Uh, this is Bitter Blossom. Yeah. Okay, so I think I was working when this set was, yeah, when this set came out, I might have been like working the, the pre release or the launch party, and then the next one, Shadow More, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at that point, like I was talking to a lot of Magic players, and this is a card we talked about from the, from the new set around the shop, and like it did feel weird that this didn't exist yet, <laughs> even then. It sort of feels like a card that was from beta, but isn't, you know? It's kind of messed up. Like it is just two mana you know, a counter spell that doesn't hit the things that typically kill you. Right. But like when you think of essence scatter or remove soul. Yeah, remove soul from ninety four. Yeah. Right. What are you countering? Creature. Yeah. What is this countering? Instant sorcery, enchantment, planeswalker, artifacts, like battle. Bat <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
I, I'd still say like I'm less inclined to include this in my blue draft deck than the creature variant, though. Mm-hmm. Right. I oh. mean, magic is about creatures, though. Yeah. yeah. Creatures are more than. Unfortunately, this was was this in the Strixhaven set? Yes, and it was Been really in good in sets. Strixhaven. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> it's a very set dependent kind of mm-hmm. card. But yeah, if there's like nine card types or whatever, you know, creatures are more than ten percent of magic. They're yeah. more like more than fifty percent of magic. I always depending saw, on the format. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Japes, armor throw two and a black for a one three summon throw. Tap, sacrifice armor thrall to put a plus one, plus two counter on target creature with very creepy art by Scott Kirshner from Fallen Empires. Somewhere Cameron felt a chill go up his spine. Um, how do we feel about plus one, plus two counters? Uh, I don't think that I want to be putting plus one, plus two counters on things anymore. And plus one, plus two for, I mean, I guess I just have to sacrifice the thrill, which mm-hmm. is not bad. You have to tap and sacrifice it, so it can't do it while it's summoning sick. Uh, right. And yep. it can't do it while it's attacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could if you gave it Vigilance. But you, <laughs> Some that's other card true. from 1993. <laughs> you could block an, a, uh, an X1 and then sacrifice this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you at could... the time, you could put damage on the stack. Oh. Was this Fallen? It was the stack for Fallen Empires, or are we still no, working I mean, with the batch? Right, yeah. <laughs> timing. We, let's go to the, let's pull up the rules on timing. How does no. it work? Yeah, no, the stack wasn't formally called the stack yet, or didn't exist. Yet. We were we we're making a batch. Three nope, sixth not edition. Not saying that sure. actually. Can we no. talk about the flavor text? Sure. Occasionally, an ally balked at wearing a dead thrall as armor. The priest's whips, however, were usually enough to encourage a more practical outlook. I like the sort of twist to comedy at the end there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, still like super hardcore. This flavor text does feel like it. I'm kind of surprised to see it on a Fallen Empires card. It feels very like Masks era kind of humor, like Saga Block Masks era. Well, they were like, getting their footing at Wizards. Yeah. They, they were, you know, kind of tongue in cheek the whole time, but they started off a little more serious, right? Mm-hmm. Like quoting Shakespeare instead of making up their own funny world building quotes right mm-hmm. also this is like a fantasy necromancy equivalent of <laughs> get in the giant robot shinji <laughs> yeah. yeah right which is kind of funny get in the soft thrill this card's so bad that even in 1994 12 year old nelly knew that it was trash yeah three mana one three not exciting like it was on the same print run as him to turak Woo. And like you, you'd open up a pack, and there'd be this, and be like, "Eh, I guess they did black, dirty in this set." And then you get to him to Turek. It's like, wait, there's what? plenty of good cards. Him to Turek, the, the Pump Knights, even like yep. there, what is it, Mind Stab Throw? Yep, it's like a one three minute two two that yeah. when you hit them, you can sack it, and they discard like two cards, two or three. Like, like three it's cards? a ridiculous. Yeah, you have to cards. connect with it, but yeah, that one. Uh, there was like two red black decks at the very first tournament I ever played. Um, which was out at a little store that's probably not there anymore on Scott Road in Delta. And yeah, uh, I was playing red black land destruction. And but there was another red black player who was jamming mind mind stab thrill and like more mind twists and him to mm-hmm. and hand attack stuff. And so we were both trying to do different sides of the denial strategy. I love how so much of early magic is just preventing people from getting to actually play the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We love that. Yeah. 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 James. Speaking of early magic, Surge of Strength, red and a green for an instant from alliances with, uh, as an additional cost, discard a red or green, wait, hold on, yes, as an additional cost, you have to discard a red or green card from your hand. Uh, Target creature gains trample and plus X plus zero, where X is the discarded creature's Casting cost. No, where X is equal to that creature's casting cost. So it's do it's, you just oh. a card, and then the creature gets double power. Their 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 CMC as a power bonus, oh. and you discard any yeah. red or green card. I I was it. trying to fix this, oh. like read it as though uh, it had been updated, and then I just got confused by everything. Choose and discard a red or green card from your hand to have target creature gain trample and get plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is equal to that creature's casting cost. That's so weird. Yeah. 
There's so few words that still make it onto you, the current Oracle wording. Can you, you read the Oracle wording yeah, first? Do you want the Oracle? Yes. Sure. Yes. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a red or green card. Yep. Target creature gains trample and gains plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is that creature's mana value. Okay. So, yeah, it's kind of like a weird fixed berserk. Yeah. Right? I, this is so bad, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Berserk is good. toughness. You no. got to spend two cards for that effect? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I like the symmetry where it's like you have to discard a card instead of sacrificing your berserk creature. Mm -hmm. They both give trample. They both pump only power. I mean, I'm on your side, Kathleen. This card is really bad. Yes. However. It's bad. I cannot fight the chimp I am because I see a berserk style effect and I think like, yeah, I mean, I could probably, you know, what if I targeted ghoul tree with this card or any other very large mana value that has like caught like mirror forcer mirror enforcer or um one of them um one shot robot mm -hmm. take somebody out of a commander game like just no blocking for you just yeah if trample you, if you're in like original ice ages homelands alliance cube and then your opponent doesn't have a lot of removal but they do have like some kind of one seven wall mm -hmm. you got to board this in yeah yeah, yeah. got to get through somehow Ideally with Surge of Strength. Well, ideally with something other than Surge of Strength, but, you know. But maybe Surge of Strength is the only way that your deck can do it. Or this something. doesn't even look like Surge. No. Eh. Surge could do this cosplay. <laughs> it's a very wide character. Yeah. He it's very 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is he... He's not... He's not wearing armor. He's wearing a cape, and then that's just his body? No? I it's hope... armor. Well... What color is his body? I'm sorry. He, he's got like a certain, he's got like a white person's face and then his skin, if that's his skin, is just... It's like shale. Clothes. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be armor. I guess that armor would be uncomfortable. Is that where you're going? Maybe, they, maybe they're just kind of soft and shitty and skinny underneath that. And that's <gasps> just like a, a Batman suit that they're in. Like a, yeah. you know, like a Underneath a it just armor. looks like a wiener. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank like you, a... Ruth Thompson, for this wiener. <laughs> James! Oh, Bloodline Keeper. Uh, two black black for a 3-3 three, three vampire from Innistrad with flying. And tap, put a 2-2 two, two black vampire creature token with flying onto the battlefield. And pay black transform Bloodline Keeper. Activate this ability only if you control five more vampires. And it turns into, I believe, Lord of Lineage. A 5-5 five, five vampire with flying that says other vampire creatures you control get plus 2 plus 2. Tap, create a 2-2 two, two flying black vampire creature token so this card's unbeatable and limited yeah it's so good and limited yeah i've even played it in highlander also one of very few cards that i've cosplayed as you cosplayed as the blood yeah line? just like for halloween yeah i put together as best i could like tried to match color on this side um with like you know it's like a white blouse and black boots and a mm -hmm. big cape and i tried to like get some gold yeah. fringe in there fancy yeah this would have been in like I don't know, the year after this came out, like 2011 or something. Yeah. I've definitely tried to put this in a like a vampire tribal commander deck. Mm -hmm. Works okay. I, it's, <laughs> Works fantastic. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, very it scary. Be, for the longest time, it was one of two four drops in mono black aggro. This and Juzam Jin? Uh, like Sliver? No, that fi it is a fi another 5-5 five, five for four, but with Trample instead of deal one damage to you in your upkeep. Well, Grinning four. Demon's a 6-6. Six, six, four right? Black Pips. Oh, Phyrexian Obliterator. Yeah. Right. You got it. Yeah, but look at the, the Keeper. This card is this just... This card's fantastic. It's so busted. Making flyers good... every turn. Mm -hmm. Even if it didn't have the third ability, like even if you can't turn it into an overrun, yeah. just four mana, three, three flying tap, make two, two flying is very, very good. Yeah. Just making two twos, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I have five vampires? I will pay a single black... And now I have a bunch of four fours and this five five, and now you're dead. It's pretty yeah. powerful. Good card, removal. Very magnet, good card, as mm -hmm. far as I recall. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. you know what? Keeps up with even today's power level of magic cards. Yeah, I yeah. bet if you printed this in like a modern legal set or a standard legal set, it would still be incredibly groan inducing. Mm -hmm. if you can't like if you can't get this off the board, it's just going to kill them. Yep. Yep. Card yeah. would have probably been pretty good and. Um, Crimson Vow. If this was, yeah. yeah, if this was just printed in Thunder Junction, it'd be like, oh, well, I'm taking that rare. Yeah, there's a bunch and, of vampires and, in Thunder And Junction. maybe maybe yeah. you'd be trying to consider playing it in a standard deck, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just solid. Yep, yeah, good card. James. 
Ooh, the Exotic Orchard, uh, a land from Conflux that taps to add one man of one. Sorry, add to your mana pool one man of any color that a land an opponent controls would produce. This is uh, become a Commander All Star. I was gonna say, I was like, this is a Commander All Star. Mm -hmm. It took people a while to like latch onto this, and I think that this is not. That you'll find stuff with Commander product where the product they make kind of responds to the cards that people play, where it's like, oh, everybody likes playing Blasphemous Act, so we're going to start putting Blasphemous Act in every single pre-con, right? Whereas this card felt like it was a case of, well, we're not going to print good lands in your <laughs> pre-con, but we will give you Cards like Exotic Orchard, because if you sit down with your pre-con at a table with all the other pre-cons in the set, you'll be able to, like, the Orchard is going to be, like, effectively a five-color land or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they kept doing it for, like, every single one. Oh, so there's just, like, tons of printings of Exotic Orchard. At this point, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and people Great. realize, like, hey, yeah, this, uh, if I play more than one color of mana yeah. uh, in my deck, then this is great. And they also kind of change... Another command tower, right? Yeah, yeah they kind of change the mana rules, too, like how you how mana produ production works in Commander. This was a while ago, but... yeah. Well, also, like, sometimes there's a, there's a small sub-theme of, like, steal opponent spells or do this or get this, and this helps you. And sometimes they don't let you use any color of mana to cast mm -hmm. them. That's usually an extra bonus, so... Yep. I've, I've seen the Exotic Orchard pull out some revolting plays more than once of like, well, I'll just get some green mana and, you know. Mm -hmm. This and Reflecting Pool are also a really interesting judge call because the exact rules for what could produce mean. Um, there's sort of some English to kind of, you kind of have to just accept it. Like, you can't argue yourself into it too many circles. You just yeah. have to figure out what the ruling is and go with it. Um, also, I don't think it's ever seen any, like, eternal play, but... Uh, standard certainly like when when this card was in standard there was a five color control deck that was very popular and that deck would often be your opponent so in that deck you could it's like for the mirror it worked but also just it was a five color deck so whatever color your your opponent was playing like you play this and like yeah. okay this is a this is a boros land this game or this is a blue black land this game like that's okay yeah because some of the two color decks still would play like a vivid land right and or whatever some, yeah and... sometimes even you're not five color opponents would hook you up mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is kind of funny because this like you said with reflecting pool is that this card often just gets compared to reflecting pool as like a the mirror of the pairing yeah um where I believe Reflecting Pool can add colorless mana. I think Reflecting Pool says type. Type, and yeah. this just says, uh, yeah, color. I just remember this one at Felwar Stone Reflecting Pool. It's like, okay, you got to read the whole card. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you read every word that's on the card. Double check your ruling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Exotic Orchard. Thank you, James. Moon Glove Winnower. Uh, three and a black for a 2-3 Elf Rogue from Lorwyn with Death Touch. And I believe this was the first, well, outside of Future Sight, this right. was the first usage of Death Touch. For Future Sight being just the very previous set before this came out. Where, where it showcased Death Touch and Reach on Thornweld Archer. Right. Mm -hmm. Also showcased many players getting disappointed by the casting cost of Thornweald Archer before reading the name and then realizing <laughs> yeah. it wasn't Tarmogoyf in their pack. They got a weird border, cost one and a green, and got a T in the top left. Yeah, and hey, now that's come full circle. You open up a Thornweald Archer in a future set pack, you're probably like, sweet, elves. Yeah. Oh, there's a Goyf in here too. Whatever. Mm. We'll leave that on the table. <laughs> We've closed the loop. I think it's very interesting that back in all of these days that back in the old days a two three with death touch for four it was like great yeah now nah, this wasn't great it was okay okay this would be like a 23rd i think because the four drop slot in green black elves even in your limited deck like this is not in the top like it was contested eight cards that you would like to see even from common yeah this is before my time mm -hmm. it's like not an embarrassing card this card's fine play, yeah it's a rogue yeah. So it gets into the blue black decks as well or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do we feel about elves that do not have green in them? I th I'm fine with it. Because we've moved on from, it used to be just green and black, yeah. right? And then we got 
aside from like a co- there's like a smattering of like mono white elves from like fallen empires or whatever mm. where it was just like a oh you you had to use the word elvish in this like right. medic card huh mm-hmm. yeah or whatever or like they got the artwork and it's like very clearly an elf and they're like well like we have to make it an, I elf, guess now. It's an elf now yeah um but now we've got mono white elves and mono blue elves not sure how i feel i mean i'm kind of indifferent yeah i'm i'm pretty indifferent i'm fine with it i feel like Green black is the natural. I say I like green, and then to a lesser extent, black is the primary home of the elves. I like the mm-hmm. black being the sort of like. I mean, winners live to eliminate eye blights. Creatures the elves deem too ugly to exist. Oh the, yeah, these the people arrogance suck. and the the awfulness yeah. of these elves. You yeah. know, which Lor- is like the flip side, right? Yeah, lower one elves are the worst. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're uh, genocidal maniacs. Bunch of bunch of bunch <laughs> yeah. of jerks. Yeah. They're yeah, lower one elves. Like Nath is a a totalitarian, <laughs> yeah, right. Like Nath, Nath is a fascist, yeah. right. We can we can all come together on that. I yeah. think we can all agree Nath is a fascist, and uh, I'm glad that nobody plays that card in Commander anymore because it's uh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, James. Oh yeah, now we're talking Sandbar Merfolk. <laughs> Uh, one blue for a one-one summon Merfolk with cycling for two, a uh, strict upgrade to Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. <laughs> Just a strict, yeah, absolutely strict. Absolute upgrade. strict upgrade. <sighs> I mean, maybe there are. I, I always felt like cards like Merfolk of the Pearl Trident and Mons Goblin Raiders, like. They never, maybe this is all the Shondalar I've played talking, but, you know, Lord of Atlantis only buffs Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. From the first set, yeah. From the, and that's it. That's it. From the first set. And then. Not even the other Lords of Atlantis. Nope, because they were Lords. Yep. Uh, and then Goblin King does buff Goblin Balloon Brigade. So big. Which is cracked. That card yeah. is shockingly good. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Mons Goblin Raiders uh, in the first set. But and, it, and Zombie Lord only gives Scathe Zombies regenerates. Right? And Scaven... Oh, was Scavenging was a Ghoul a zombie or a ghoul? It was, like it was a ghoul. ghoul. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it felt interesting that Magic didn't take... I mean, obviously Magic came before uh, stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh! But it was weird to me that it didn't utilize more like just, you know play these cards to boost your one mana one one iconic vanilla cards like there's no skull servant here you don't know what i'm talking about from but Yu-Gi-Oh? the yeah, chat no, the chat is losing their mind okay. yeah put, um, put comments below about skull servant skull servant mentioned skull servant for uh james can we get skull servant <laughs> it's I, like 300 attack 200 defense and it's just a little guy it's right. like a little skull skeleton that's like eh. okay is it it's like kind a, of a meme does it have tiny bones yeah, it's okay. kind of just like a, a the most pushover kind of card you could imagine. Sure. I, don't, I don't know what this is going to do, but let's try it. Boop. No. No. Nope. Uh, oh, no, good no, effort no. though. Good I effort. Didn't like it. And so there's a whole. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh does this all the time, where it's just like whole archetypes based around specific cards, and uh, but usually they're the like the big heavy hitters, you know. And so, but there's an archetype surrounding the the little dorks. And it's a fan favorite. And it feels like, I mean, not we haven't said a single word about Sandbar Merfolk here. but All these words are about Sandbar Merfolk. Yeah, in a way where it's just like, it feels like that would be, I don't know, print a new card where it's like, hey, uh, give all your Merfolk of the Pearl Trident plus two plus two or something. Right, right. Or, you know, maybe make uh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident like that make a card that is like we're with the pearl trident you can just have any number of them in your deck and it's just like you can fill your deck with as many of these one mana one ones as you want that work with your lord of atlantis yeah it's interesting design space pushing that that kind of playing with that more because it does cost a card to include you know the lord of atlantis yeah so you're not just paying those two mana like you made you know you mm-hmm. built your deck to do this thing and like even getting it to come together is work from from the beta the yeah. only angle, right? Like, there's something to say about that kind of design that stops people from playing different cards and new right. cards, which is not cool. Um, but, you know, people seem to respond well to, like, rat colony and stuff. 
Yes. This is the first set that had cycling, right? Yeah. Like Urza Saga is the the birth of cycling, one of the most <clears throat> prevalent um, abilities. Like became it got brought back a couple times, and then just became a uh, evergreen mechanic mm-hmm. that we is see in almost every or set. Is it deciduous? Or whatever. Like it comes back some of the time. Sure, it's not in every single set, but yeah. it's in a lot of sets. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, we may have like a consistent stream of like one card that cycles per set. Yeah, it just usually just been giving green basic land cycling. Yeah, they all it's, the time, it's right? some yeah. form of cycling. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So. And, like, looking back on it, it's like, oh, that's an interesting thing. It's like, oh, you can cycle it if you don't want to play a 1-1. One, one. And, like, from today's perspective, it's like, yeah, you can cycle it. Mm-hmm. This card, period. Top- like, that's the front side of the card. Yeah. This card top eight at a Pro Tour. Or oh, top top okay. four to Pro Tour. There constructed was, or limited? Constructed. Okay. There was a Merfolk opposition deck. Oh, and this and was it, in. Okay. I think you just had to play this kind of card. Well, what else in opposition, it's kind of sweet because now you've got a tapper for one. It mm-hmm. doesn't even, like, it's... Got sub- it doesn't even have summoning sickness when your opposition's in play. It's already maybe, locked in Oh, maybe this one was not in it, and actual Merfolk of the Pearl Trident was in it. Okay. But uh, they probably would have preferred this. Yeah. yeah. James? Ooh. That's a really interesting match card. Force of Savagery. Two and a green for an 8-0 elemental from uh, Future Sight that has Trample. So how does this work? When, well, so it comes into play, uh huh, and then it dies. But what if you uh-huh. have some kind of like global pump everybody's <laughs> toughness? Oh yeah. yeah, for instance, or Varals. <laughs> for instance, a Gaia's anthem mm. from the very same set, which is just glorious anthem, but in green. Yeah, it's uh. Hell of a rare to open as a kid. Huh? I mean, I guess if you're a kid, if you're exactly a kid, yeah. mm-hmm. and you open this, you're like, oh my god. Look at that Here. that power. Look at that power. Yeah. Three how do mana? I get eight power? How do I yeah. get this to work? I guess I'm gonna probably spend more than three mana to get this to work. Mm-hmm. Um Incandescent Soulstoke came out in the very next set again. We're, we're talking about future sight in the lore one summer. And so, like, that's a way you could do this in standard, right? Is that the? Am I thinking of the right name of the element? There was an yeah, elemental the board. incandescent soul stoke. Yeah, is the elemental the three board. mana two two that pumps your other elementals for yeah. plus one plus one. So yeah. you can play that, and then you have a creature with more words on it than just guys anthem. Um, I never saw anyone try to do that. At no. I and mean, I even played elementals at F and M um, <clears> when this card was legal. But but not this elemental. I didn't play this elemental. No, although that would have been a fine combo. Maybe maybe Force of Savagery would have been a better F and M in clip. Well, oh maybe I played, maybe I played elementals when this had rotated out and the next set had rotated in. Did I play elementals post shards of Alara? I don't remember. I Anyways, wasn't even there. I wasn't creative enough to think I should be jamming this card in my deck. This this eight zero that'll die if I don't have an inconsistent soul. So what play. year did this card come out? Two thousand and six. Two thousand seven. I Something was like listening to Hissing Fauna, Are You the Destroyer? But Oh, by of Montreal. Yeah, of Montreal. Mm, nice. uh, likely when this f- card came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not thinking about Magic the Gathering because I was tootling around uh, the UBC grounds. Tootling. I feel like the designers were hoping that after printing this card, it would get brought up in coverage a lot or just talked about between players... Uh, on tournament floors because like going eight and O oh is like a big achievement if mm-hmm. you're at a Grand Prix day one. How are you doing? I'm Force of Savagery. I'm Force of Savagery. How are nice. you doing? I'm Horn Turtle. Yeah. <laughs> right? Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I'm a Tolarian Sentinel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Grizzly Bear is over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. James. Ooh. Maldrotha the Grave Tide. <sighs> Three black, green, and a blue for a 6-6 six, six legendary elemental avatar. It says, during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. Uh, this is one of the most popular commanders mm-hmm. of all that. time. They knew that when they printed it. They're like, we're going to just pander to the commander players oh, so hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like... I, I mean, absolutely. So big, so it, much value. It's kind of wild. Have we? We haven't gotten another Muldrotha, right? This is the only Muldrotha, I think. Yeah, we have Multani and Yargle mm-hmm. teamed up, but I think Muldrotha did not to get a team up because she is too powerful on her own. Mm-hmm. Feels kind of weird that we didn't get a new Muldrotha somewhere. Do yet. you think the Phyrexians killed her? Absolutely not. 
Okay. There's. I. You know what? I. Okay. So I. It's been a really long time since I read these stories, but mm-hmm. I believe that Muldrotha was there in the Dom United stories, but didn't have like. I think she showed up and did like one thing because Slimefoot was like doing stuff. Mm-hmm. I think Muldrotha was talking to. I don't know. I believe she's there, but I honestly can't remember but let me know in the comments if i'm misremembering or if i have most of the most of the way right she's so big <laughs> she's great it's we like her. physically large. It's, oh, okay okay i thought you're just like you know we have colossal dread no, right? like, no 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 i'm not want to pay six to get a six six There's brother no i've looked at primal crux i know how big we can get <laughs> okay okay great <laughs> but, but this is yeah she's just very tall Mm-hmm. Which I kind of think I I want more of that in Magic the Gathering. Just really tall things. Yeah, just like uh, give yeah. me an elemental or like a, a legendary creature that is just like massive. Sure. Start you know? start showing me scale planets. Yeah, like I you know we have uh, too many legends in general, but I would like to see. I I think that personally I would be a little more into this mass amount of legends if uh, this league of legends if you will if um some of them were just like legends of of nature and just forces of nature in a way like the bit like the gitrog monster is a great example mm. although sure. the gitrog has been a little flanders uh, would you just like if more of the legendary creatures were like medium sentient is that the idea like they can't all be reasoned with and you like more of them to be like chaotic i kind of want that yeah i kind of want them to be legendary because people are like do not go over there. yeah i like, do not <laughs> yeah. don't that's no yeah. no, no no that's uh-uh. that's Stay on the this bad side of the place. fence yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah fair enough james Ooh, mind control Three blue blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, you control enchanted creature. Originally printed in M10. This is uh, a banger. Important draft pick. It's Mm -hmm. like way up in the middle of the like rares and mythics in terms of like best cards in the set. You know, towering over most of the other uncommons and many of the rares. Um, Also the art, can we just say like was Mark Tadeen just like, hey, I know what mind control does. I play magic. Um, so this doesn't say non-zombie. <laughs> yeah. How, how would you like me? Uh, let's let's have a mind control target a zombie. And, and then like what, what kind of art direction should we go with here? Right. So there's sort of like this image of the, the planeswalkers like hand as an imprint on their mind. Uh, Looks like they've got little blue mana symbols in their eyes. Yeah, it looks like maybe what's happening here is that there wasn't much mind to begin with, but we filled it up with the controlling enchantment. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm getting. The flavor text here is attributed to Jace. Why fight the body when you can dominate the mind that rules it? Wow. I mean... Good question, Jace. Yeah, <laughs> Jace, that's a great question. Yeah. Um this card and mind control effects have just gone through this like hoop of obviously control magic is just like busted the four mana version of this then they print this at uncommon and it's busted and they're like okay well what do we got what do we do we gotta add something additional to this and then they had like a series of like other five mana mind controls at uncommon that were too good or they were very good they just had right. like and drawback that is like kind of the set mechanic, like the the right. World Wake one or the ROE one was like you got to return a land from your hand every turn, right? Or there was, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that one was that one nuts, so good. <laughs> they, the best they did, I think, was like shortly after that one. Which set was Domestication? Was that ROE? Or uh, was that, that was ROE. Yeah, so Domestication is four mana, and it can only target a creature with power four or greater or you have to sacrifice it right away if it's a big creature i think it's it's if it has four or greater you sacrifice it so maybe you can have it for like one turn if they're stealing their like eight eight Mm -hmm. i can't remember if you sacrifice it right away or you get james can we get domestication from rise of the eldrazi but but in the first printing of domestication it was a rare and i think that no it was uncommon no they made it uncommon later right didn't they? Or did they upgrade five or buck, downgrade five it? Buck. They, five bucks. Five bucks. It's buck? been both. No, five I, no, I don't want to give you my. Come, you five don't want to. Don't want to give me five dollars. It's uncommon. Yeah, All uncommon right. to rare. So what did they when they reprinted it in a corset? Then they made it rare. Then they made it. Rare. All right. All right. All right. 
So yeah, this card was messed up. Oh, it's your end step. Okay, yeah. okay. So it does only really hit large creatures for any amount of time that matters. Yeah. Or the small creatures. You could still steal their thing. Steal their flyer. It, yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, enough yeah. time to oh, tap and sack and draw a card. And it goes to rare at M14. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then back to uncommon. Well, for double masters. masters 20. Yeah. That's probably fine. Well, so many creatures have power. It's cool. They're just force four. of negating this or whatever <laughs> yeah, exactly. in double masters. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, mind control is kind of wild. Yeah. James. Oh, we got a Nelly card here. Crib swap. This is a Nelly card. Uh, two and a white for an ins- tr- uh, for a tribal instant shapeshifter, uh, changeling. Remove target creature from the game. Its controller creates a one-one colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling into play. An uncommon from Lorwyn, and some incredible artwork mm-hmm. <laughs> in Magic: The Gathering. Yeah, what's wrong, baby? Yeah, obviously a terrifying thought. There's actually in Canada there was a recent. Uh, provincial government apology to two uh, kids that had been swapped at birth in, in a hospital and it was like during the 60s scoop this Whoa. was just like a few weeks ago yeah and they were like in both in Saskatchewan or something, or something yeah like yeah well they were yeah born still living in Saskatchewan I think or Manitoba and then like they were like born in the same hospital and then they like lived their lives in the other person's family uh, but that was just like a government error um so yeah, condolences absolutely. But this card. No, I meant condolences for living in Saskatchewan. <laughs> that too. Um, this card is neat because I played it in Mono White Kithkin even after Unmake was printed because you can reveal it to your stalwart turn one. Gold medal star. Gold medal star. Like they get a they get a one one, but eh, you know yeah. you got to jam as many Kithkins in the deck as you can. I mean, there's a there's a whole cycle of like I get rid of something, but you get something back in return. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's generous gift, which is I think the classic. But we just literally had like holy cow or not holy cow um, bovine bovine intervention, bovine intervention printed. Yep. This is so the downside here is it's a shapeshifter creature token, so it could be any creature type. So it might be good in your opponent's. You know, kith, uh, 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 kindred deck or whatever mm-hmm. the new type uh, uh, type line for that is, but it's still a one one, which sucks. But yeah, yeah, they get a one one. They also just like works with whatever like thematic deck they're playing. Yeah. I do have to give a shout out to the original. Oh no! Afterlife from Mirage. Oh, afterlife. Yeah, it destroys the thing. Can't be regenerated. And they get a one one flyer. flyer. Yeah. Mm. That's the worst. Though. I don't want to give him a flyer. Is that life three mana two or is it only two mana? It's three mana, yeah. Okay. Right. Buried target creature and put an essence token into play under the control of that creature's controller. Treat this as a one one creature with flying. By I, Pete Venters. I, sh- I assume this has been put a one one spirit token into f- with flying. into. E- I will. I is mean- essence a creature type? Great question. James, can we get the Oracle on Afterlife? Thank you so much. Oh, look at that. You were correct. Yeah. There you go. Errated into a 1-1 spirit. Why do they look like they're arguing? Great Of the artwork. The ghost ghost is like, hey, dude, was not cool that you just killed me. (laughs) (laughs) Really prefer if you didn't do that. James. Ooh, Soren, Vengeful Blood Lord. Two white and a black for a four loyalty legendary planeswalker Soren. The static ability of as long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. And plus two, Soren deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Minus X, return target creature card with a converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. Of course, this is from War of the Spark, and this card is a beating. Yep. It, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was not fun to play uh, lose to and limited. No. Yeah. Um, I, no disrespect to Tommy Arnold, but hey, James, could we get the anime version up? Oh, the JoJo's one? Yeah. JoJo. JoJo. It's okay if we can't. Oh, yeah. God. Kono Dio, da. So for, for storyline purposes, why is Soren like this? Why is he... Yassified? Uh, well, why is he leaking blood everywhere? I believe this is uh, after he had just let himself out of uh, 
the walls of his mansion that Nahiri had stuffed him in as oh. revenge. He was for... coming out of a cage and it's... he was doing just fine. Well, after... <laughs> this is War of the Spark. So it was right after Ravnica Allegiance, right? Yeah. But what, is that but, like, full this year is... after but, Shadows like, of so... Ranistrad? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, right. Nahiri got yeah. let out of the Hellvolt, went back, saw what had happened to Zendikar, and then stuffed Soren into a wall, essentially. What's Nahiri's whole deal? She's angry. She gets a really good, like, a bunch of uh, storyline development in the comics, the Boom mm-hmm. comics, which are non-canonical, technically. Oh, okay. Uh, but okay. Uh, her whole deal now is that she uncompleted herself kind of through sheer will, uh, but uh, broke her spark by being mad. Whoa. Hmm. That feels like anger is, like, the what ignites a couple of sparks from people. Yeah, it right? can be, like, fear or... It's a strong emotion. And, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, this Soren's kind of brutal. Soren's have this one and the one from Cons, especially. Um, of like they both just have these abilities that make give your entire team lifelink. Both are the ones that make two power flyers, like the mono black one from Crimson Vow and the one from Cons. Mm-hmm. I'm always just like, no, what? no, please stop. don't, don't with the planeswalkers that make two t- two power flyers. The Crimson Vow yeah. one being a two three as well is just like, oh, yeah, can't even like so trade hard. with a bear. Yeah, like, oh. exactly. Yeah, but can't yeah. use a shock to get it. But yeah, when this one comes one. down, sometimes you just can't get back from like they spent four mana to just do a lifelink overrun. Like that's mm-hmm. all they really got out of it is they just gave her one lifelink for a turn. And I mean, that like, seems nah, very yeah. good though. My yeah. limited oh, yeah. deck can't yeah. deal with that. Yeah. It's like, play this, attack. You killed off my thing. I gain a bunch of life. My thing di- has died, but then I'll just return it with the other ability and get yeah. it back to block. Yeah. Or attack, just... bad, good blocks for you, bad attacks mm-hmm. for me, then bring the creature back. Yeah. Or just play it, attack, gain some life, ping you. I now have a six loyalty planeswalker. Please respond. Yeah. 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 James? Oh, yeah. Mm. All right, here we go. Skirk Drill Sergeant. Uh, one in a red for a 2-1 goblin. Whenever a Skirk Drill Sergeant or another goblin is put into a graveyard from play, you may pay two in a red. If you do, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a goblin card, put it into play. Otherwise, put it into your graveyard. I'm going to veto this. <laughs> Because we have talked about this on this podcast on this already. on Scryfall yeah, Roulette before, five, but but fun. this card is so funny because it triggers off any goblin. Right, does not say non-token, and it doesn't even say you control, and it's broken. Yeah, it's just shockingly like you can just loop with this card or set up like recruiter stacks with this card. But you know, it's a good one. Yeah, see previous discussions. Yeah, watch watch all of these Scryfall Roulettes. Yeah. All right, what's next? <laughs> Pariah. Two and a white for an enchant creature. Uh, in- redirect to enchanted creature, all damage dealt to you. A rare from Urza Saga. This was like... They it- just reprinted this on the crime sheet, didn't they? Maybe. They did. This is a, this is a breaking news. Cool. This wow. card in the hands of my friend Nico Scardvet. Uh, got him a pro tour win, or sorry, a uh, pro tour qualifier win. Yeah, oh. like he 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 won an extended tournament in Vancouver that let that got him like a ticket to Hawaii or Japan or something. Like he got to go to one pro tour. Off Maybe it was one of the states, but off of uh, yeah, Stuffy Doll Pariah. Yeah, <laughs> and then there were some other combo pieces in there, but. Like I think you you put the pariah on the stuffy doll, and then you have another way to like damage yourself. Mm-hmm. So it creates a loop. There's a combo so that you just like win immediately yeah. with your yeah. stuffy doll. I can't remember all the other cards. All the damage dealt to you is just dealt to the stuffy doll. The stuffy doll then deals the damage to the opponent. And so maybe there's something where it's just there's like a third card. Yeah, like, anytime but, a creature you control is dealt damage, it's dealt back to you or something yeah i can't yeah. i can't remember but it's certainly like you know stuffy doll people are familiar with and so there's various other combos you can do with it with today's cards but even back in 2010 or something um you know you could put a pariah on a stuffy doll and then pass and if they don't have an answer to the pariah the stuffy doll is indestructible so they need to like exile your creature or destroy your enchantment which mm-hmm. a, lot of, a lot of decks don't do quickly or easily then like now they can't attack yeah or they die right Remember so. uh, hearing about people putting this, putting Pariah on Soltari Priest, the two mana two one Shadow Pro Red, and then just like against the in the red matchup, mm-hmm. right? So you just slap the Pariah on that, and they can't get rid of it unless right. they have Curse Scroll. But you know, 
Because it's directed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's redirected. It's not prevented. Yeah. Or uh, The pry is not the thing dealing the damage, so the damage still knows information about itself, even though it gets moved around. It's a really interesting Pretty hot. piece of magic rules that makes this card work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. James. <clears throat> Ooh, Frontier Bivouac. ETB tapped. Tap to add green, blue, or red. Uncommon from Consitark here. I big, remember this card. Big fan of the bivouac. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, Try if they had just given us <laughs> land types, I still would have been so amped. Like, they didn't need to give us cycling, They didn't too. need to give it This cycling. card where it's just like, yeah, it comes and play tapped and adds one of three colors. It's like, yeah, that's fine. That's already busted. It's good. Yeah. This is a good card. Why does still it Still today. Cycling? Why do they have cycling? I don't, they, I don't know, I mean, man. because of Acoria, but, you know... Like why? Sure. Why do the Aquaria ones have cycling? Just remove that just, line. Just text. move them to rare. Give us the land types. We would have been like, holy shit! You can yeah. get a frontier oh my god now that you can tutor up. This Losing cards, my mind. These cards still rule in like yeah. commander or casual mm-hmm. play or cube. That's yep. like cube that is not like a higher power cube. These do a ton of heavy lifts. Still really good in three packs of KTK draft. Oh, yep. I remember these. So these were high picks in draft yep. mm-hmm. because they did so much for you. That bivouac does look cold though. I want to say like if you're trying to make a shelter in the woods, try to seal it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got those tarps up. Or I say they have fires skins. going, but yeah. they have a pretty high tarp budget there. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I doing it like I guess the skull of uh, a dragon is you know you got the long snout so you got some cover from there, but like skulls are especially decaying ones are somewhat porous at in points and they have like I don't know there are holes like the eye sockets as somebody yeah. with a large skull in his office. Um, there, yeah, it's not the best shelter. Maybe, although I'm looking mostly at like the jaw, like the teeth, like that's the cold part. Maybe that's like just the front entrance of this big whack and there's yeah, a bunch yeah. of space hollowed out underneath yeah. the skull and there's a bunch of warm places too. I think, I think maybe they're fine. I think that's the, like, that's where they've got the fires and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, sure. Like, the that's actual, the kitchen. Like, yeah. <laughs> but there's a bedroom that's like a little warmer. Yeah. Cool. Would you, uh, how much money would you pay to would you pay to Airbnb this? <laughs> No Airbnb. Three hundred and fifteen dollars for two nights. Okay, not Airbnb, but a less okay. terrible company. That... VRBO. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, you know what? I probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I'd want something with plumbing. Yeah, that's but fair. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm not a camping type. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fair. James, Tide Shaper. Another one mana Merfolk. Uh, a blue for a one one Merfolk Wizard with Kicker for one generic. <clears throat> When Tide Shaper enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, target land becomes an island as long as Tide Shaper remains on the battlefield. Tide Shaper gets plus one, plus one as long as an opponent controls an island. How far they've come with a 1-1 merfolk oh, for yeah. one. But it, like this is fun because you can change something that they want into an island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like uh, I like merfolk really playing into the like messing with your lands. Or doing so, I mean, some may say turning an opponent's land into an island is an upgrade, but, you know, having this, this is a long tradition for Merfolk, dating back all the way to Stronghold with Tidal Warrior, just like a one mana one one that taps to turn a land into an island. Yeah, that one got played in Legacy for years, Mm -hmm. right? Maybe still does, I don't know. There's, uh, and and they, for Modern Horizons 2, they had this one in the Rashad and Dockhand, which is like... A Rishi P on a creature. Is it? It's just like a two drop or something that has it's, Rishi P's. It's a here? one mana one two island walk with Rishi P's ability. Jeez cool. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Merfolk's oh, come right, a long like way. Oh, right, like the Cabal Therapist cycle or whatever, right? Kind mm-hmm. of those creatures. Yeah, yeah, but this one's actually reasonable. Right. Um. Yeah. Merfolk. Incredible. Are we? Getting medium trolled here because like this is the second one one for one Merfolk we've looked at today, James. Are you really being? Are you really? How random is random cards? Random. Are we going to talk about Tidal Warrior next? It's random. The okay. only cards, the only cards I skip are lands, like basic lands, because okay. they do pop up from time to time. Uh, and like there's the uh, uh, the avatars and stuff like that. But other than I mean, that, you, oh, can, you don't want to talk about you, Vanguard we could, cards. We could talk about Vanguard cards. All right, I'll uh, keep that in mind if they I, ever pop up. I mean, yeah, if we want to talk about. Uh, RKF's uh, 
Vanguard Miri. I think that's some of the best art in the game. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of that artwork. Um, actually, can we get that on the screen right now, James? What? Miri what Avatar. Miri? M-I-R-R-I. Yeah. Uh, it just brings up the normal cards. I don't see the avatar here. All right. So the avatars right. pop up, but we don't know how to search for them. That's okay. Great. That's okay. We're going to uh, have the technology for you someday, kids. Next Thanks card, for watching please. that. Oh, wait. Oh. There it is. Nope, that's, that's not from there. MTGO. Uh, so there's there's Vanguard cards. There is there are, there is MTGO Vanguard as well, and it's like mm -hmm. the same thing, same yeah. idea where you pick one of these to be your set of bonuses. In fact, I think this is the same card. Uh, maybe I don't. I just remember uh, looking at the art. Yeah, you remember uh, the picture. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but before MTGO, oh, because this Vanguard. is Miri the Cursed. This oh, is not. It's this not is not Miri the. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not just regular Miri. Okay. Kathleen, have you ever seen the Vanguard cards? I'm sure I'm familiar <laughs> with them, but no. It was this push from Wizards to like try to get more store play happening, I think, was the idea. Like You had to play in these leagues to get extra special prizes like Magic Player right. Rewards. Kind of mm -hmm. Back in the 90s, though. And I, I feel like Wizards was like, well, how are we going to get people to play in stores instead of at their home? we got to like, add rules so awesome. you get these Vanguard cards. There you yeah. Go. yeah. Oh, yeah. Big fan of this piece. Okay, of it isn't the same Vanguard card either. This one just... Gives Damn. you a chromatic yeah. turn and five life. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. That's cool. I, uh, at MagicCon, was it Minneapolis uh, or Philly where Richard Kane Ferguson was there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, got a bunch of stuff signed by him. Nice. And I was asking him for a print of this. I was like, do you have prints of exactly this card? I And um, him and his partner were like immediately lit up and they're like, oh. Somebody asked about the Miri. Awesome. They're like, check the Facebook page. I'm going to let you in on a secret. It's coming soon. Okay. It was okay. so exciting. Exciting. Yeah. exciting. Yep. James. Mm -hmm. Bloodfire Kavu. Two red red for a 2-2 Kavu that says, pay one red, sacrifice Bloodfire Kavu. Uh, Bloodfire Kavu deals two damage to each creature. An uncommon from Apocalypse. How do we feel about everybody's favorite four mana red uncommon Kavu? Yeah. Uh -huh. Flame tongue Kavu, you mean? <laughs> no. Hey, this kills FTK. Sure. <laughs> sure, Wheeler. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you can do the pyroclasm at instant speed. I'm going to level with you. I can't actually see the Kavu here. Oh, I don't know which thing is the Kavu. Like, I assumed like it was trying. the like arms and legs Me thing. too, but like that's... Like a, is that a giant? A Kavu is like a little beastie. Kavu is right? kind of like a, yeah, like a lizard critter. It's just thing. the art for like a stone golem, and then they just got switched. Maybe. And then they were like, nah, we don't have to say anything. I can't see. I Who can't, knows what a Kavu is anyway? We made up the word I Kavu. I can't see the Kavu. There's it's, a bird. There's a whirlwind. Yeah. And there's some kind of stone golem, right? There's no Kavu here. <laughs> there's no Kavu. Well then, I'm gonna should look we move up the, on? Yes, let's. As a magic card, like this is a cool for only one red, like the ability. If you have this on the table, it's kind of exciting. I just don't want to pay four mana for a two two. But like it was I mean, this was over twenty years ago. Yeah, I know, I get it. it's from Apocalypse, but different time. But you know, from today's standards, no there's not like any creatures that are like real playable I can think of that are just like also for one red you can sack it and get a pyroclasm mm -hmm. anytime you want. Like that's not on a lot of cards. Mm -mm. James? Mind Shatter, X Black Black Sorcery. Target player discards X cards at random, a rare from Morning Tide. Now, we've been getting a lot of Lorwyn block. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, I've been that. Getting a lot of Lorwyn block. Yeah. I'm okay with it. This is a card that I feel like, even by me, is pretty underplayed in Canadian Highlander. Like, now Mind Twist is zero points, right? Mm -hmm. Which is wild. Um, but before Mind Twist was a point, this is this card. I remember Chris Sutherland specifically being like, I'm just going to play this. It's fine. And I think every time he cast it, it was like, yep, still just killed my killed me with Mind Shatter. You know, this card does work. It's gotten a lot worse. This and Mind Twist have gotten a lot worse uh, in a world of the initiative. Yeah. And everything. True. But that's I true. mean, it's pretty gross. With, like these kind of cards that, with any kind of mana acceleration is pretty gross. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or just like in your instant sorcery fetching toolbox mm -hmm. not having to pay a point for like a mind to respect just one more mana 
The downside about these car this kind of card, as opposed to its counterpart, Mindspring, is that like as the game goes on and as your mana scales, this just gets worse. Yeah, that's true. Whereas like Mindspring is just like, oh my god, I can draw eight <laughs> cards right now. I could draw twelve cards. Oh Jesus. Yeah. James Concordant Crossroads. One green for an enchantment enchant world. Creatures have haste. That's what it says. That seems well, fine. Oh yeah. It's your opponent's creatures too? Yep. Yeah. But it's very exciting. Play this in Commander. Oh, it's a Commander Staple. Yeah. Well there you go. Hey, yeah. I'm learning. It's Commander Staple. Um You can also get this card for a red mana. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. It's not an enchant world. It's nope. just a regular enchantment. Um but yeah, this was this was very like big news from Legends getting printed. Like the people at the time, this card has never not been a card that people want to play. Yeah, like I'm... the kids uh, when Legends came out were like, "Whoa, everything has haste." That's not what we said, but it was like that. This card recently got reprinted too. I'm trying to find. Oh yeah, is it in like when? a commander deck or something? Uh, or Masters Double deck? Masters 2022, Double and there's Masters. a secret layer. So and it was in Chronicles for what it's worth. Yeah, you know, it wasn't ever. It's never been a super expensive card, but it has been always a somewhat played like casual decks. <laughs> yeah. Want this? This card? isn't a card that YJ ever had ten copies of. No, God, like no. one or two copies maybe, or yeah. like we buy a collection and they're like, oh, this guy had four oh, that's nice crossroads too. we bought. Yeah. Elena Danner. Yeah. Yeah. Elena Danner. Shout outs. Yeah. World Enchantments are so funny. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what are, what are we doing here? World <laughs> Enchantments, like, it's it's really surprising to me that they didn't just at one of the bigger ratas be like, by the way, World Enchantment is over. Yeah. That just says Enchantment now. You know what I mean? They didn't do that. So if you're curious, if you play a Concordant Crossroads, and then I play a Concordant Crossroads or a Land's Edge, the York Concordant Crossroads goes away. I blow it up. It's like the old legend rule. Yeah. You can only have one world enchantment at a time. Huh. And the new one kicks the old one out. Yeah. They're like planes. Yeah. Or planes. Yeah, exactly. They're like planar cards, like the mm -hmm. big ones that affect everybody. Yeah. Uh, so if your friend is playing Concordant Crossroads a lot and you hate it, just put a Land's Edge in your deck. Mm -hmm. Or Nether I don't know, Void. Or Nether Void. Or right, the Nether Abyss. Void. The right. Right, those ones are actually played. I forget about yeah. those. Yeah. yeah, there are some enchant worlds that still. I mean, this one sees playing commander, which means that it probably sees more play than the uh, mono black pox holdouts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess chains of Mephistopheles is one too, isn't it? Or is no? It that enchant? chains is just normal enchantment. I think. <sighs> okay, yeah, well, it's very weird. Yeah, it's so weird. James Ketterick Creeper. Blue, black, and a red for a two-three horror that has death touch. And Keteret Creeper can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. So menace. menace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh pre menace being a keyword, I guess. These two abilities on the same card are cool though. That's kind of, it's kinda of messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like it's competing with the other uh, you know, common creatures that cost all three colors from Charles mm -hmm. and Lara. So they tried to be like little marquees of the the planes, like um, Oh, shoot, I can't remember all of them. But I'm pretty sure, like, the Bant one was, like, a flying creature with okay stats for the time. Like, a 2-4 flyer that can get bigger or something. And then the Naya one was, like, a 5-5 five, five, five for 5. Yeah, with, I like, remember. another ability. That had, like, like, pay one colorless. A uh, big creature gets or, first strike or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, like, decent creatures. And this was the Grixis one. Yeah, it, it, it's a uh, phantom warrior. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Well, but that, but that had, plays Death Touch defense, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. if they want to block it, they're two for one in themselves, unless they have a big first striker, right? Um, and then it just hangs back as a Death Toucher, which you often normally need to pay one for, but it's fine. You get two cards. Look at this absolute critter, though. Yeah, I wish there was a scale anything here, right? Like, there's a little... Like a banana. Sure, scale but any scale anything. <laughs> Give that creeper a banana. Like how big is the creeper? Right, they're, they're taking up all of that little platform of rock. But I don't know how big. Yeah, that but platform is like is. a platform like this, or is it like this? Like, yeah, like is, is Kara like a... creeper as big as Godzilla? Mm, right? is, or is it like a wily e. coyote kind of size creature? Is Kara creeper like microscopic? I think this is like know. a small, smaller dog. Okay. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. I don't want to see something that big. Dog sized. Yeah. Yeah. That would not be I mean if it didn't kill me if I touched it, I would own this as a pet. Maybe. Depends on what it eats. If it eats like if what if it eats wheelers? 
well, then that's going to be a little tough. Yeah. Don't don't take home a pet that eats wheelers, even Please if don't. you yourself aren't a wheeler. Please don't. Yeah. James. Shattered Angel. Three white white for a 3-3 three, three flying angel that says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, uh, you may gain three life, an uncommon from New Phyrexia, an incredibly weird magic card. This card's so weird. Yeah. What's the story being told here? Like, I can remember, you know, these going around kind of late, and it's like, well, it's a 3-3 three, three flying for five. I guess you take you take that. What the heck is this ability or art plus art like creature type? Like what's the what's the story? So I remember this card actually just being like a couple of dollars. Like I don't am right. unless it's received some printings. Because when it was printed, it's like, you know, there's every angel is an important yes. piece of the magic card landscape. Just like every elf. Magic Those player. are the two creature types where like you really got to like not throw those ones in the garbage. If you a magic player doesn't them. love elves, they love angels. Yeah, There's, exactly. Yeah. And even the, unco- the uncommon ones especially because they're like the angels player can like afford <laughs> their copies of Shattered Angel or like Seraph of Dawn. Right. Uh, and maybe, um, you know, they can, if they spend enough quarters on these cards, they can save up for a single Baneslayer this Angel. seems like yeah. it might still be good in Commander. I mean, oh, yeah. if, if it's a Commander Maybe that's why, yeah. Angel this thing. thing just gains nine life every turn. Every turn gain At nine least. life. Or, or like or 18 a life. Spell yeah. For like a not very exciting creature, realistically. Yeah, yeah. I, could, I could see myself playing this in a Commander deck that cares about... Either angels yeah. or life gain or oh, this is great life gain. Just like pseudo punishing your opponent, but not in a way that like makes them not want to play commander with you. you right. know? So not like full stacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're more just like a you did this to yourself kind of thing. Honestly, this card seems like if you can get it down early enough, like even before turn seven in a commander game, it's just gonna put you in this position where like they can attack you, but you have sixty life. <laughs> so they could they could like attack you down to thirty or they could just kill someone and they want to kill someone instead. Yeah. And then like but, they could remove this thing, but it's kind of annoying and not terribly but good. It's, and it's not killing anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might it probably didn't even attack. It's just like, no. yeah, I have a three three flying and uh gain some some life and you're marking it down, you're like, Yeah, I'll gain life. Yeah. But like nobody notices that you gained eighty life <laughs> from until, this card. until they're like Wait, what? Why are you at 160? <laughs> yeah. Just did crater hoof math and like I can't quite kill you? What? Huh? Uh James, do we have a potentially final card here? Ooh. And going out with a banger. Uh Calastria Highborn. Black black for a 2-2 vampire shaman, a rare from World Wake. With whenever Calastria Highborn or another vamp you control is put into a graveyard from play, you can pay a black. If you do, target player loses two life and you gain two life. Just like a just a TTBB, a top to bottom banger. Mm-hmm. This card, the stats on this card, the artwork on this card, the mm-hmm. ability, like this is I love the look of the Zendikari vampires. Oh, it's yeah. my favorite. They're yeah. fantastic. Yeah. They're uh they're probably not great people either. Oh but... no, they're no, all allies. They're, they're they allies. Band- to... They banded together to defeat the Eldrazi. Yeah. All they... the they they were like, you know what? We can we like eating people, but yeah. we like not dying to the Eldrazi more, so we're all also, the Madrana, hero of Malakir. I know, I know. We can't let the Eldrazi kill all of the people, or there'll be no one less for us left for us to drink. Right? So, so there's a. I was just checking. The enemy because, of my enemy. <laughs> because this is a card that I feel like has not received that many reprints. Yep. And in fact, it, there's only two other versions of this. It was recently put on the list, okay. which has kind of knocked its price down. So you can get a copy of this card for like four or five bucks okay um and then there's a dci promo i remember this promo oh yeah oh yeah. which it was full art yeah it was game day or something right uh game yes day top eight any any guess on how much this, this version cost? of the card is worth 25 dollars. 30 bucks Ooh, i'm sorry uh this listing has it at fifty dollars US. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah, well, I wouldn't probably want to get sell it for mine a, either. You could probably get it for a bit less, but this is, uh, yeah, 
kudos to D. Alexander Gregory for having their art zoomed in unfairly and still looking fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of magic cards that kind of get like if you look at the the full painting and you're like oh why didn't we get this sure you know you miss out or it just doesn't really capture like even this card you do remove the like horde of vampires behind her right but you still when you look at it up close you still get the feeling of like no she's in charge yeah she's she's running the show yes she's this art has been uh, reformatted for vertical uh, a decade before vertical became a thing. Uh, wow. That's right. That's there true. you go. Jeez. Also, so she... you, can, you can buy this thing at Card Kingdom for uh, 32 bucks right now. There's Wait. two available. Oh. Just well, letting you, you know. Just Probably not anymore know. by the time this podcast yeah. goes out. Um, but yeah, super solid in the same block as Blood Gas. So if you have a Skull Clamp, you can get the triggers over and over again or any other way to sacrifice your, this your creatures. Here. Oftentimes when this came down and you were in a standard or Zendikar block, which was a thing back then, constructed match, um, they'd play it. Like if they had to play it early, okay, fine. Maybe you trade off with it, they get a little bit of value. But if they're able to just like play it late and then keep like four mana up, they just attack and it's like it doesn't matter if you block mm-hmm. or not, you're dead. Yeah. Cast Demon of Death's Gate, no. drain you for six. <laughs> Ew. Lacerator, yeah. Highborn, two more Lacerators. Blah. Yeah. Brutal. All right, and a f- our final card. One more. Our final one more. card. Right. Just one more. Give me a number between one and five, Kathleen. Um, four. One, two, three, four. And our final card. Hmm. Really, uh, overgrowth. Hey, overgrowth. Uh, two and a green for an enchant land. Uh, whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, it produces an additional green green. This adds. So much mana. I think I literally just played this in a commander you deck. Did. You did. just played it two days ago or yesterday. I was yeah. like, this seems very familiar, but not the printing I saw. Mm-hmm. It is uh, huge. There you go. That's the, the Warhammer 40,000 printing. That's the one you played. Yeah. yeah. From the Tyranid deck. Seems really good. I played this in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah? Yeah. Back, back in the day when we were jamming uh, just blue-green. And we didn't want to play Mana Dorks because uh, part of the plan of the deck was to blank the enemy's removal. Going from three mana to six mana... Is a big... <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's yeah. it's a lot. And, you know, and getting all that mana from a single land, too, just, like, leads to so many shenanigans with cards that untap lands. Yeah. Where you can just, like really pop off and start to do some disgusting things. And I feel like overgrowth is one that people are more, you know, they think of wild growth or like utopia sprawl, fertile ground, these like cheaper versions. Cause three mana is a genuine cost yep. to play. Absolutely. Um, and they're more into the whole, like, no, I want to go from one to three. And it's like, Mm-mm. I mean, that's cool and all, but I don't you know, know, three really to cool. five. It's pretty good. Three to five, and then, and then hit your land drop, play a Titan. That's, yeah. yeah. What are we talking about here? That was good. Cast your Muldrotha. Whoa. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Muldrotha turn four. Mm-hmm. And this is an enchantment for your Muldrotha to flush out your card types. If Not you can bad. get this, you know, if you had accelerated already with one of the other land enchantments or a land war elf, and then you can get this on turn two. Turn three, whatever you want. Yep. Titan, maybe it's a seven drop. Who knows? What are you feeling? Yeah. What do you want to do? World's your oyster. I know what I want to do. I want to thank everybody for watching and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Tap Tap Concede Scryfall Roulette. I want to thank Kathleen. Thank you. I want to thank Nelson. Thank you. And I'd also like to acknowledge James. Cool. Thank you, James. <laughs> Thanks, James. Everybody in the comments say thank you, James, as well. Um, for us, though, we're going to say thank you uh, for listening and supporting us over at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. Of course, we wouldn't be able to do anything without your support and to Card Kingdom sponsoring this stream or stream, this uh, podcast. And again, you could go pick up your uh, copies of Calastria Highborn for $32. <laughs> for $32. Yeah. For that's and, a full art. Yeah, for the full art foil. Make your vampire deck look good. Treat yourself. You deserve it. And uh, while supplies last, if you use the linky and ask button, please, you may get a button that says, um, they yassified my sword. No, I'm going to use my veto on that one. It doesn't, that's not what it says. Well, veto is also a vampire. Math is for newt, newt. Sure. 
great. Goodbye.